I had planned to get an early start on the videos today, but the storms had the same idea. Storm Prediction Center, moderate risk for the Deep South, hail, wind, and tornadoes expected today, and in fact, they are already ongoing. Today is also the 45th anniversary of the Wichita Falls and Vernon tornadoes, which were very influential in the early years of spotting and chasing. Here's some satellite views of those storms from April 10th, 1979. Now let's take a look at temperature extremes today around the world. A heat wave continues in southeastern Asia, 113 degrees in Burma with many readings in the upper 100s. This is a look at some of those temperatures, 100s throughout the interior valleys of Burma, 97, actually there was a 99 reading at Saigon, yeah 100 at Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and in the Philippines, Clark Field got up to 95, which is a little bit unusual there, so plenty of heat distributed throughout much of Southeast Asia. The cold spot in the regular populated areas of the world, minus 31 on Elamir Island up there in northern Canada. Of course, we're not going to see any of that cold air come very far south. Antarctica hovering close to minus 100 on that ice cap. The big story today appears to be this derecho in progress, which moved out of southeastern Louisiana, moved across southern Mississippi, and is now tracking through the Mobile area. This is due to move into the Pensacola area within a couple of hours. Tornado warning in effect for the city of Mobile ahead of this apex, some very strong winds and possible tornadic spin-ups along the leading edge of that line. And this impressive bookend vortex, that's going to be on the trailing end of this line on the north side, and that's due to the flow curling around on each side, producing those so-called bookend vortexes. The current weather map early this afternoon shows this frontal system centered in Louisiana. Cold front extending southward with a warm front along the central Gulf Coast. Of course, warm fronts often associated with severe weather outbreaks in the southern U.S. Anyway, those storms taking place right there along that warm front. Across the rest of the country, no other significant weather except for this burst of cold air coming down through the Dakotas into Nebraska. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you're from. Wise words from Mr. T, and that's why we need to roll it back to 4 or 5 in the morning. And we see this large MCS through the western Gulf Coast region into southeast Texas. And if we continue forward through the dawn hours, you can see that MCS pulling into southern Louisiana, developing this prominent apex, which of course moved all the way to Mobile. As we go through the remainder of the morning, yep, that's definitely a signature that we see with these derechos, or at the very least, that's going to be a large bow echo. That brings us to the current time, tracking into the Florida Panhandle with a very large trailing stratiform region and a mesoscale convective vortex around Jackson, Mississippi. Thunderstorms developing in Texas as well not only along the cold front around Corpus Christi and Victoria, but also cold core convection across North Texas. And that's a very prominent area of convection. During those last frames, you can see a few anvils. It's probably better to go into the infrared imagery. You're going to be able to see those a little bit better. See those breaking out right there around Dallas. Just enough moisture back there. Very steep lapse rates with cold air in the mid and upper levels helping to produce some of that convection, and that should persist through late this afternoon and early evening. Then it should start shutting down. The 500 millibar heights and isotherms shows a distinct cold pocket around Brownwood, Fort Worth, and Waco, down to minus 20 Celsius. 
That tends to flatten out as we go into the evening, but still rather well-defined area of cold air aloft. That will help support convection going into early evening through the Arklatex, and that should shut down as we lose heating. Then by tomorrow afternoon, looks like it flattens out a little bit more, so probably dominated by dry advection. Not as much of that cold core convection. In fact, the upper level low opens up and moves into the Midwest. Significant positional error with the mesoscale models. If we go back to 16Z, which is about noon Eastern time, you can see the leading edge of the MCS from almost southeastern Mississippi down to New Orleans and then becomes kind of a cluster of cells and a few well-developed elements around Mobile to north of Gulfport. Here's what the mesoscale models showed at 16Z. Pretty close, but not very well developed. If we bring this up to the current time, as we record this, it's about 1830Z. Yeah, that's a pretty significant positioning error. The actual location of the cells about like that at 18Z. The model has got that probably 75 miles too slow. So the actual position there at 18Z, right about there, almost moving into Florida. So yeah, that's a good example why you really have to be careful with those mesoscale models. So as we continue with the editing and production of this program, the leading edge moving into Pensacola, we had a tornado warning briefly just north of there, right there, that's going to be near the town of uh, Bluff Springs, McDavid. That's expired. However, this is continuing to move eastward. As we mentioned, pretty predictable as far as the apex, so that should carry it on down Interstate 10, maybe towards Tallahassee later this afternoon. And of course, a very prominent element in all of this is the significant precipitable water up to two inches around New Orleans. That's very close to the all-time record for this time of April, early to mid-April. So going forward through the rest of the afternoon, two-inch precipitable water feeding that MCS, the dry slot starting to work into Mississippi and eventually into Alabama for tomorrow. There's a look at the jet stream pattern, polar front jet across western Canada into the northern states, down to the south, subtropical jet south of California, also in the Gulf, some of that coupled with polar front jet energy flowing into Texas and out across the Mid Mississippi River Valley. And of course, our upper level dynamics, strong shortwave across Texas down towards Corpus Christi. That puts a lot of the upper level lift in East Texas and off the coast of Houston. Further to the east, not much upper level energy, but we don't really need a lot of upper level energy. We've got plenty of moisture, plenty of instability, and not much capping to overcome. So back here, a lot of this is going to be driven by the steep lapse rates with that cold core aloft right there. And going into this evening, that gradually pulls to the east. There goes that cold core into Arkansas. And then early tomorrow morning across Tennessee. And a lot of the dynamic lift shifting out into Atlanta and Birmingham. Going into tomorrow afternoon, a lot of the lift starts moving into the east coast area. We're going to be seeing, well, very shortly, I'm going to show you the surface chart, some strong development of a coastal weather system. Meanwhile, out to the west, ridging starting to move into the high plains and Rockies. And then into Friday and Saturday, ridging out west and troughing out east, associated with strong cold advection into the Atlantic seaboard region. And another strong weather system heading into California. And we'll check that out on the surface chart. So let's take a look at the forecast. A little bit of thunder out there. Yeah, we're back in that cold core area for sure. Low pressure area in Louisiana this afternoon, cold front as we mentioned. 
And even though, you know, we pointed out these storms are outrunning the models, this focuses on the synoptic scale. So the models should handle all of this rather well. So even if the storms are too fast, they'll outrun a lot of the surface support. So this is a good reference to go by. You can see by tomorrow morning, low pressure area there in the Ohio River Valley. That will be important because we're going to have this back flow to the northeast of that with some residual moisture along that occluded front. Also, we got this triple point moving into the Carolinas. Warm front across South Carolina. So I don't think we can totally rule out this area, North Carolina, Virginia. Some storms also likely along the cold front from Georgia into Florida. So this is approaching peak heating right there. Deep southeasterly flow in Ohio along that occluded front. Could see some severe weather there. And this is the area that I've got a little bit of concern. North Carolina, Virginia, and of course along the cold front itself, although the flow is a little bit veered in some areas. Tomorrow night, very active, warm conveyor belt moving across New Jersey into New York, bringing that moisture northward tapping those high precipitable waters. So it's going to be pretty rainy through the Northeast Corridor. By tomorrow evening, 981 millibar low in Lake Huron. Strong cold air advection coming down through Minneapolis into Indianapolis and into Cincinnati. That's going to be the axis of the strongest cold advection and the surface ridge from North Dakota down to Texas. And then we shift our sights out to the west. New Pacific weather system moving into California. That's it coming together. Strong trailing occluded system there off the coast. And those freezing levels probably, I would, I'm not really sure, but I would guess they're probably about maybe 6,000, 5 or 6,000. We'll take a look at this again on Friday, but uh, yeah, we're looking at a closed low along the central coast of California. Front moving inland, but it appears to fall apart. New Bear Clinic development around El Paso moving into Texas, and we see storms breaking out by late Monday into Tuesday. And this is very fast moving. This is one in the morning, Monday night, and there's one in the evening, one in the afternoon on Tuesday. So very fast movement in just 12 hours. So if there's a little bit of timing error, that would definitely shift our area of concern. So going by this map alone, upper Midwest region under the gun right there. But, you know, six hours either way, that could put you all the way back to Kansas City or out into Michigan. Strong North Pacific weather system moving into the Great Basin area. And that looks pretty potent there for the Rockies, Colorado, and parts of the Central Plains. Dry line getting set up, so we may be back in business as far as thunderstorms for late next week. And possibly into the Fort Stockton area. You can see that convergence right there. So that's a classic weather pattern for supercells out there in the Big Bend. Fort Stockton, Ozona, Sonora, that whole area there. Bakersfield, that's, that's a prominent town from Chaser Lore. All right, so that's the last frame that I have right there, clearing out with this cold air mass moving south, and then maybe kind of a quiet weather pattern for the weekend of the 20th, but we'll see about that. That could always develop and move up the boundary, so we shall see. One last check of our MCS. It's already cleared Pensacola. And the apex moving slightly east-southeast, maybe moving straight down the Florida Panhandle. That's going to carry it into the Tallahassee area within a couple of hours. Hopefully no serious effects there. The uh, circulations, if we switch over to the velocity, you can see it's not completely linear. A couple of weak mesos along the length of that MCS. The echo tops, the higher 40,000 foot tops, only focusing on right around the interstate. 
down the length, only looking at about twenty to 25000 for the tops on that. So it looks like a locally stronger sell right there along the interstate. So a little bit of enhanced effects right there. And the rest of it more outflowish than anything. Kind of a minimal hell risk down there. A lot of the serious severe weather effects a little bit further north. One last check of that high resolution rapid refresh. This is the 16Z run. I'm going to bring this up to where the MCS has just passed Pensacola. It's going to be roughly about right there. 22Z, that's 6 p.m. Eastern. So quite a bit of error there. That's going to be uh, about three hours of error. So the model just too slow on these details, and it's got the apex a little bit too far north, although it's kind of complicated. There's two apexes involved. So not really capturing the structure and movement all that well. It's a good example why you have to be careful when you use these tools. Anyway, so that'll do it for today. Here's a bit of Eclipse footage from Greg taken on Monday. This is sped up by a factor of six, but it'll show you quite dramatically totality. So enjoy that, and we'll be back on Friday for another episode of Forecast Lab. Remember to leave a comment. Comments always help quite a bit. Upvote, subscribe, and we'll see you in a couple days. Enjoy your Wednesday, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.